Hello again everyone, Saka here and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo and when we last left off we uh, looked at the South American DLC and put in uh, an anteater here, a very large anteater, the male renin giant anteater. Let's go ahead and take care of some of the things uh, going on today. We have Mary Colga. Hello, good to see you. We have Arcane G Main back again. Merlin Scorch, that's a new name. Hello, Merlin. We have Edoris, or Y Doris. Welcome, welcome. David Churra. Six. Hello. We have J left O four. Hello and G G G zero seven O five. Awesome. Lots of conservation credits for us. That puts us at twelve hundred and twenty seven conservation credits. Also, they said that the uh, tickets were a bit underpriced, so we will make uh, forty dollars for the adult, thirty five for the child, and uh, increase that up. And looks like our Bornean orangutan is our most appealing creature, which is very cool indeed. Uh, I got a last or a comment on one of the last episodes saying that the Baird's Tapir is actually a good interspecies enrichment opportunity with some of the new um, with the new South American creatures. So let's take a look at the Baird's Tapir and the interspecies enrichment, and indeed the anteater and the white face capuchin monkey works well with the Baird's Tapir. So. Uh, let's see if we can find the Baird's Tape here. I think they're right over here indeed. Uh, what is their space like? That's going to be the big key. Uh, so they barely have enough space as it is by themselves. Um, and in fact, they're running a little bit low on hard shelter. So if we were to uh, put the Capuchin Monkey in here, perhaps they wouldn't have enough space. That's something to keep in mind. Um, we might be able to move our anteaters over to the Baird's Tape here and open this up for the uh, the monkey. It just depends on what our animal trading uh, looks like and can we even purchase the uh, Capuchin Monkey. And we've got a male for 5000 and a male for 1300 So unfortunately on the trading market, uh, we don't have enough to get the uh, the monkey, but it's something to keep in mind for the future. Uh, today, we are going to look at some more of the South American animals, uh, the exhibit animal at the at the least, and if we can squeeze out a llama, that might be pretty cool indeed. Uh, looking at the jaguar, uh, all conservation credits and way out of our price range, as you can see, unfortunately. So only a few anteaters on the market, both males, so that's not going to help us out in the grand scheme of things. Uh, let's go to page two. All right, lots of jaguars. Okay, so there is one male for 680. Uh, let's look at the Zoopedia and see if the male is fine by himself. Yeah, one to two. So let's go ahead and grab us the male jaguar. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, he was on page two. I'll tell you, the black jaguar is pretty intimidating indeed. Uh, but there we go, 358. We will go ahead and adopt from Le, Pit, Le Petit Bourg Boynat. I'm not French, but uh, yeah, we got uh, Tenoch from that zoo. Uh, nice and immune. That is good indeed. We have the first level of all of the diseases researched, so hopefully that will keep the jaguar. Uh, nice and healthy. Let's also take a look at our power situation. We're running on the cusp of our limits here. Uh, we might be able to put down another, um, what is this thing, the wind turbine, uh, a little bit over here, sort of connect the pass up, make the jaguar say right about in here, uh, then extend a staff path out here uh, off the food court and the exhibits and get that coverage there. So. All right, let's go ahead and put down a staff path only and run it this way. Nice and out of the way for folks to uh, to not see it, hopefully. Yeah, get 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 off of that. There you go. All righty. Facilities and then let's get our power situation up wind turbine. Okay, so that would be good if we put it say chicka chicka it's kind of a tough thing. Uh, if we put it here, that might work. I don't know if there's enough clearance for that path. We could just put a yield transformer down. 
and that looks to be okay if we uh, put the Jaguar say over here a transformer right here would not be bad so we'll connect that up right there and assign that to a, uh, a work zone as well as getting our Jaguar pin uh, luckily we have the electric fences so even if they uh, are the climbing type which I'm not sure if they are or not uh, we can keep them in uh, yeah grade at three climb proof higher than 10 feet so we're gonna need to have a nice tall uh, fence and 861 feet squared of climbing with 1.4 miles of land space, 8 to 42 degrees Celsius on the temperature. So when the winter months do come around, we'll have to put in some heaters, but I believe we will be able to uh, put down the Jaguar just fine. So I will go ahead and get some barriers up. Glade, grade three climb proof is definitely going to be our electric fence and this bad boy needs to be 10 feet tall. So I will go ahead and put down an enclosure here, uh, maybe uh, get some pathing around uh, and not close enough to this transformer. So people are all like, ooh, that's disgusting. I don't like to see how a zoo works. My immersion hashtag. So we'll go ahead and put that down, uh, make it nice and tall. We need at least 10 feet, so we will go 12 uh, just for the time being and we will get this electric fence put down. So I will be right back. All right, Jaguar is ready to go in the enclosure. And there we go, there is Tanakh, our Jaguar. Welcome, Tanakh. Let's go ahead and get this uh, enclosure nice and all set for you. Um, first off, we have 80% terrain. We need a lot more soil. And we need to, uh, we can get rid of some of this long grass, so that is easily done. And we need climbable area as well. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and do a box select of this climbable area here. And just take a look-see. If we can uh, copy that, duplicate that over to right there. And just so we're uh, on the up and up, we'll delete that uh, the tree and the foliage there just to make sure that we can start on an, on an even keel. And let's see how the uh, Jaguar likes that. All right. So that should be yes, indeed. So good climbable area, good land coverage, good hard shelter. All right. That's what I like to see. Now we need some, uh, let's do some heavy soil around the climbing area, shall we? And that will uh, increase the soil right below us here and we'll just get a lot more soil around the backside just so we can uh, fit comfortably uh, in that tolerance and we'll go right back to the uh, the corner there awesome so plenty of soil plenty of terrain plenty of climbable area and indeed the jaguar would like some plants and coverage from the north american and south american grassland temperate and tropical biomes so let us get into our continent and we'll stick with the south and central america and we'll do some grassland some temperate and we will do tropical as well and tropical is really uh, going to expand our possibilities here so there's some plants there we have a brazil nut tree there as well uh, looks like we need some more actual coverage that's a little bit of coverage there for our mangrove trees and we don't want any mangroves attached to the sky that wouldn't be uh, all well and good how's about a holly tree as well not much coverage how about uh, the kapok tree I imagine the kapok tree is going to allow us a lot of uh, coverage and there we go that one will fit just dandy all right so that is plant coverage done now we have toy and food enrichment items to get uh, let's also filter by our species and go uh, let's see was it the j yeah just the ye old jaguar all right so a fire hose ball would be good for the jag so that's 50 out of 110 for the toy. We also have our blood pumpkin. That's gonna be good for the uh, food enrichment as well. Um, let's see, we don't need any bedding, but any good cat needs a scratch pad. And there we go. So 150 out of 110 for the toy enrichment, well, 10 out of four for the food enrichment. 
Let's make sure we have some also food and water available. So we'll water pipe down here by the tree and get a, a large food tray as well, just in case uh, the blood pumpkin and the uh, arboreal uh, feeding platform uh, doesn't fit correctly. And did we get a challenge? Yes, adopt and place four different habitat species. We'll go ahead and claim those rewards as well. Any new community challenge? Release 800,000 African animals to the wild. We could probably do that with our African uh, enclosure. A, and the Amazonian giant centipede research is done. All right, so where is our Amazonian giant uh, centipede? There's our cockroach. There we go. Let's go with our layout and add a broken hollow log. That will get them 80% happy, and that is all well and good. Uh, next thing that we're going to do is last episode, we brought in some llamas. Uh, I actually have some llamas in the animal trading uh, center here, and we also have some sable antelopes. Let's go ahead and uh, release the sable antelopes into the wild if we can. Just sort of clear up our animal trading space a bit. And I actually thought I did this in the last episode. Um, maybe they need to be bought or purchased by another zoo before I uh, get credit for that, but that is fine. All right, let's get some education speakers uh, going. I'm pretty sure, yes, indeed, there's one over here. Duplicate and put that down over here, and let's make that the Jaguar. Booyah. All right, sweet. Jaguar, and we will duplicate and put it right along the fence line here, if we can. Sort of surround it up. That way, as people are walking, they get to hear all about the Jaguar. And that's going to help some education there as well. And that will leave enough space for our, um, our llama. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put down some education items, including the signboard for the Jaguar. I'll get this entire area uh, educated up, and then we will work on the enclosure for the llama. Uh, looking at our power requirements, uh, we can continue and extend this uh, right over here. So it'll be uh, connected to our anteater jaguar and our llamas uh, over here in the powered area. So I will take care of that and be right back. So while we're waiting for our llamas to arrive, our jaguar is playing uh, soccer with the fire hose ball. Very, very cool indeed. But as you can see across the way, uh, our llama has arrived. Wait, Formosan black bear is about to inbreed. We are going to uh, stop that quick, fast, and in a hurry. So we have the female and the male. Um, who, how many animals do we have in here? So two females, one male. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this female then. Release you to the wild. 310 conservation credits. That's what I like to see. And uh, that will be fine and dandy. And our llama has now arrived at the zoo. So we will see uh, what we need to do to get our llamas happy. And there they are. All right, so of course enrichment needs to be done, but they have plenty of space and they don't need hard shelter, it doesn't seem. Uh, we just need to get some short grass in here, and that is uh, easily done. Let's go ahead and remove a lot of this uh, tall grass here. And now they are within their tolerance. Outstanding. Looking at their plant coverage, um, they got grassland, temperate, and taiga. Uh, let's put down some grassland, temperate, and taiga as well. Maybe uh, we can put down uh, some other stuff here. All right, so we've got some holly trees that we can put down. Uh, we've have the ooh the muzzle tree. I like the look of that for sure. Uh, they don't like too much coverage though. That's probably about as much coverage as the llamas can handle. Uh, also, we have a space for 16 species toy enrichment and the species food enrichment as well. Let's go ahead and look at some enrichment items for our uh, llama. And is that in the L's as llama? Yes, it is indeed. Outstanding. So we don't know any uh, toys or food enrichment items for the llama. 
at this point, unfortunately. Uh, we can put down the large water trough, uh, but that's not really enrichment. Uh, let's go with the large food trough as well, just in case. Uh, that tells me that our vet is going to have to get on researching our llama stuff. So we will go vet research, and where is our llama? There it is. Noel, hop on the llama research, please. So we can find out exactly uh, what is going on here. But our llamas have arrived. Enrichment is where we are on the struggle bus. Uh, but their terrain is good. You know, once our intrepid uh, veterinarian gets a hold of some llama research, we can make them happier. Um, it's crazy to think that we haven't learned anything at all about the llama with all of the research that we have done. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, what kind of toys and whatnot are going to be required uh, for the llamas to be happy. Zookeeper is here doing some research. The animals in 16 are not hungry at the moment. The staff room is so far away. Yeah, that's one thing that we can do is add another staff room to this particular uh, area, as well as a keeper hut and a vet clinic as well. Um, so let us just go ahead and put down, we'll do a, a box select here. We will select all of that and we will, oh, we can't duplicate more than one building at a time. Well, fooey on you. All right, we'll put this uh, veterinarian clinic right there. We will put, uh, ooh, this is gonna be a little bit tricksy to grab. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, control click? Nope, okay. Easy does it now. Like so. Control click, hey, there we go. So we have our keeper hut that we can swing right around there. And then we'll grab our staff room just in case uh, someone gets tired over here by the uh, South American exhibits. They can chill right over here. Just sort of get them a little bit closer. Like so. All right, let's go ahead and get that assigned to a work zone. Work zone two, edit the work zone, and you all are in work zone two. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 27 buildings, two staff rooms. All right, so now that the, if the staff needs to go prepare any food or get some rest uh, from this particular area here, they only have to go so far as that. All right, so llamas are chilling. Let's go ahead and get our education items down. We'll go ahead and duplicate. Huh, can we? I imagine we can adjust the radius of these speakers and we might have to do that on the front side. But everything should be good on this back side. And that's quite a big area of speaker, if I have to uh, say so myself, and I do. Yeah, we'll be able to get the path pretty well as people walk by learning about the the, uh, the llama. And we'll have to get the sign up as well, of course, uh, on the front side. But I think we've got a pretty good um, handle on the South American creatures, for sure. No power. All right, where is the limits of our power? Okay, so we... Let's go ahead and move this one then to the front. Yeah, we can squeeze that there. And then we'll just need to get another sign going. I like a so. All right, llama. And there they are, the llama glama. Mala, mahala. Pretty cool stuff. All right, get your education on. Reading the information board. Nice and happy. Uh, thirst isn't too bad. Go ahead and head to the food court and uh, grab yourself something to drink. Although we are starting to get a pretty long distance uh, from the food court and whatnot. But uh, overall, not bad. Not bad at all. We'll see how our uh, veterinarian is doing on her research. Meanwhile, we will also uh, level up some of these keepers as well. 
will pay for all of their training. There may be a moment where um, no one's getting anything done, but at least we will have some staff that are properly trained. Let's do our mechanics as well. And we could probably get away with all of the mechanics at once. Uh, I don't think any of the um, the barriers are in, in dire need. We'll improve the security guards as well and just blast some of these some of these vendors or all the vendors. This may be detrimental to the overall flow of the zoo while they're training. And I don't know if they go to the staff room to train. That's one thing. Or if they just sort of uh, stop working for a bit. But I think uh, the better trained staff will be able to possibly work longer and work more efficiently. And I think in the long run that will be better for us. We have over $1 million. So we can, I think, afford uh, to do a mass block of training for sure. All right, looks like the staff room is indeed getting used. Seven out of 12 people are chilling down here in the staff room. As far as the keeper hut goes, uh, no meals have been prepped in it thus far. And uh, yeah, nobody has done any work in the veterinarian clinic, which is good. Overall, we don't want our animals sick and whatnot. All right, vet research. How close are you to llama level? Either that or Noel is uh, off doing something else. I mean, she could be. She could be uh, getting some rest. She could be, uh, you know, taking care of other animals as well. Let's let's see where old Noel Waters is. All right, staff, and then we want our vets and Noel Waters. Yeah, we'll see what she's up to. Our vet's down at the bottom. Yes, indeed. Noel Waters. She's in work zone one. She's got lots of energy. Conducting research. <clears throat> There's Noel. Getting a little tired, but Noel has um, chilled. We've helped the staff room. Habitat is at a cleanliness risk. Already. Are the llamas pooping like crazy? Yeah, it kind of looks like they are. Oh, so Noelle is going to actually come in here and take a look at the animals. That's pretty cool. So someone needs to clean Habitat 16 ASAP. Yeah, uh, go tell the, the keepers. Let's go ahead and uh, call the keeper just, uh, just to help that along. Oh, crap. Here comes the rain. Hopefully people have bought some umbrellas. I did put an information desk uh, right over here. So folks should be able to uh, to buy some umbrellas. Nice, nice shift change there. Oh, balloon just popped uh, popped out of nowhere. Who's that that did the shift change? Come on, let me let me click him. Oh, that's me popping their balloons. That is mean. That is mean indeed. Calvin Ventura. Well, hopefully you're uh, going to get some training there, Calvin. All right, looks like the cleanliness is being helped. Yes, indeed. Zookeeper and a diseased animal. Oh, Clamptobacteriosis. So luckily the vet is here and Ilari the llama is uh, got some Clamptobacteriosis. So come on, vet. Is that Noel? No, that's Colby. All right, Colby's gonna box up our llama and be on the way. All right, so we'll follow Colby. We'll see exactly how much space the llama takes up on the operating table, but we did research uh, the Clamptobacteriosis a bit. So hopefully the treatment is nice and quick. Out of the way, people, clear a lane. Colby coming through with a very large animal. Yeah, I'm glad we, we put all the paths down uh, that are nice and wide so that our, you know, our care workers can uh, go ahead and take care of that. And it's a good thing that we did put down this vet clinic as well. Um, there's our llama. So some Clamptobacteriosis here, uh, but everything should be fine once uh, Colby does the work. And hopefully with uh, researching the Clamptobacteriosis, hopefully the treatment is quicker as well. 
uh, that we've sort of identified the disease and it's only a quick matter of time uh, before our llama is back up and healthy. That's what we want to see for sure. Yeah, it's uh, taking a hot minute, that is for sure. So Colby is treating our llama. It looks like the very first animal that Colby is treating. All right, booyah. Colby is on his way. It's uh, nighttime and back in the rain, but uh, just a quick matter of time. And I think uh, we'll be ready to go. Hopefully our information center is selling a lot of umbrellas. Looks like people are carrying their fair share of umbrellas as well. If not, you all need to head to the information center. Out of the way, please. All right, Llama is back in the enclosure. Booyah! So, Clamptobacteriosis treated. Ilari is back up and running. All right. Mechanic research is done. What were we researching on the mechanic side? Our transport ride. That's what we were doing. All right, Janelle. Uh, go ahead. Uh, classic theme, drink shops. We could probably get some more drink shops down. What is our power situation? Solar panels. That might not be bad, uh, but I'm thinking a more diverse drink shop would be pretty cool. So go ahead and do some research on the drink shops, if you please. We'll also look at our vet research. Oh, Callum, Callum T. Bennett. Hello, welcome, welcome, and paranoid. Welcome to the zoo. More conservation credits for us, uh, and we to end the episode, I would hope that our vet is going to research some good stuff for uh, for our llamas here because their enrichment items are hurting for certain. Animal is thirsty. Uh, well, you need to head on over to the watering hole. Uh, just in case, we will go ahead and duplicate and put down another, another water spigot down here. Uh, just in case, like, it's filled up to the brim and that uh, tortoise can't possibly uh, get any water. Hopefully that will free up that space. So Habib, go ahead and head on over to the uh, the drinking fountain, if you please. Uh, yeah, and as I was saying, before I so rudely interrupted. All right, so llama research is half done. Uh, I'll stick with it. Oh, llamas are about to mate already. Very, very nice. So looking at their gene pool, uh, Ilari. Uh, doesn't have that good a fertility or longevity. Uh, how about uh, Yu Yupanqui? So Yupanqui has a little bit better uh, genes. Hopefully we'll have like a, a, a good genetically sound child. Baby llama might not be too bad. But uh, like I was saying, I will continue playing until our vet research is complete and we can put down some llama enrichment items and maybe by that time, uh, September. No, so the gestation period is a year for the llama. So we won't see a baby llama this episode, I don't believe, but I will be right back when the veterinarian uh, comes up with something cool for our llama to do. All right, a new mechanic research is done before our vet, the drink shop here. Uh, that is going to be Foxy Coffee? Or do we have Cosmic Cow? All right, interesting enough. Uh, we might as well go ahead and put it down. Maybe here on the back side. All right, facilities. Let's go with our guest facilities and our drink stalls. And Street Fox Coffee. All right, Street Fox. That seems pretty cool. We'll go ahead and put that uh, right there. All right. And then we'll go ahead and get our shell. Okay, maybe... Let's see, what... Uh, where is that here, shell? I can never find this thing. There we go. And make it nice and pretty, of course. And we'll see how many people want some coffee. All right, coffee is up. All right, so an Americano is $7, double espresso is 8 cappuccino is 7 the mocha is 7 and decaf 
is six. All right, and already people are like lining up for some coffee. Outstanding. Foxy coffee. That's what I like to see. All right, vet research is finally done, everyone. Uh, that will be the first thing that we learn about the llama. We'll just keep her, or keep Noel on the llama. And without further ado, habitat, uh, the llama enrichment items. All right, so we've got a grab ball we can put down. Uh, let's go ahead and select the llama so we can see uh, what we're doing here. So we've got a grazing ball feeder. So that is 10 out of 16. Okay, the herb scent marker. All right, so that is a good toy enrichment. Uh, and then our grab ball. At 81. Is the block of ice a food enrichment? Let's put that right over here. No, it is a toy. But either way, now the llamas are uh, right there on the, uh, the scent marker and already loving it. Outstanding. So Ilari is feeling pretty good now. 81% on the enrichment. Uh, no new visitors. Niall is about to mature, but I think that was a pretty productive episode, everyone. Uh, we'll see if we can get any... Don't put your head in the scent marker. We can see if we can get any um, of the South American monkey uh, just to see if we can, we might be able to get uh, the monkey for a good price. If not, uh, we can put down the, our exhibit creature. Uh, but that will do it for me in this episode, everyone. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you in the next Planet Zoo video. Take care.